to another mock interview. Today we're doing a junior react mock interview and this is the first of two portions. This is the verbal portion and in this portion I'm going to spend about 10 minutes asking questions about react, uh, TypeScript, JavaScript questions and, and about maybe some, some some methods and those kind of things just to get a sense of this familiarity with the language uh, and the framework. Um, if you want to see my full breakdown of kind of the questions and answers and how I might have done it a little bit differently. We have a debrief at the very end of the second interview, or the second part of the interview. This the verbal portion. We have a coding portion at the end of that. We do the full debrief. So let's go ahead and jump right into it and see how Cody did. Thanks so much for um, showing up for this mock interview today. Um, today we're going to be doing a um, junior React interview. Does that sound right? Is that what you showed up for? Yeah. Yeah. This is uh, exactly. And so um, we're gonna start this off with a 10 minute just verbal portion. And this is just React questions, you know, React adjacent questions. And um, then we're gonna do 25 minutes of a React problem. So I've gotten some feedback that the algorithm is just, just like a little too intense and it's just like, hey, this isn't React. So today we're doing some React and Cody's gonna show us how it's done. So um, Cody, have you done other, have you done any interviews or what's your kind of interview history before we get started? Um, I've done a total of two interviews now. Uh, I felt like I did an okay job, but I uh, still need more practice and that's why I'm here today. Awesome, awesome. So let's go ahead and dive right into it. So first things first is I'm gonna set the timer. I got a little timer here, oh, if I don't lose it here. Got a little timer and uh, <laughs> I'm gonna set it for 10 minutes. And so we'll get as far as we go it and um, then we'll switch over to the coding portion. Does that sound good? Sounds good, perfect. Awesome, so I got a couple of questions here and I might go off the cuff on a couple of these, but um, bear with me here, so. Um, first thing is, um, can you kind of walk me through what use effect does and how you might use it in a project? Use effect is one of the hooks that is supplied with React's API. Um, use effect handles the side effects that React doesn't want to handle during its rendering process. So anytime you have like an API call and you don't want that to be called during the rendering process, you'll call it after. Uh, the use spec has uh, different ways of going about its business. So you can have a dependency array on the end of it. And when you have an empty dependency array, that use effect will run on the initial render of the component. If you have a dependency array with items inside of it, say a variable count, and every time that count changes, that use effect will run its effect. And also if you have a use effect without a dependency array, uh, that's going to uh, render on the first, uh, that's going to run on the first render and any time any state changes as well. Awesome. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. I think that, that that's really good. Um... Uh, what are some, you know, um, like today we're going to be doing a little bit of kind of mapping through some things, listening, going through a list of results that we're going to get back from an API. Um, what are some like common ways you might want to loop through some results so that way you could kind of render them on the screen and react? So if you have an array of objects or array of items, you can use the JavaScript map method. Um, I, I say whenever if you if you can understand map you get you understand most of React because most of React is just building lists. So I use that most of the time. You also have for each, so you can have each item and you can pass that into array it's, itself. But for me, I, I generally use map to go through each item and then figure out what I'm going to return from that. Awesome. Uh, speaking of like array methods, what would you say? the difference between like a for each and a map array method? So for each is, from my understanding, is for each item you're trying to do something to that item. So you could be like, say for instance, you have an item and it's count is two. For each item you add two to it. So if the count was two on one item, you could do for each item, add two to count. So count plus two and then each item will now be put into sorry I'm, I'm not sure if I'm correct here if it gets put into a new array or that initial array changes but that 
that property would be changed inside of that uh, array item. Gotcha. I, I don't know. Could you correct me on that? Uh, no, no. So I just want to make sure I understood your response. So you're saying for reach will kind of mutate the items as it goes through it. Is that what you, I just want to get, make sure I was clear in here. Yeah, that's probably a better way of putting okay. it. And how is map different from that? I generally use it just to map through the items and then render an item onto the screen. I know you can do other things such as mapping items to a new array, but yeah. I, don't, I don't use that as much. Okay. Speaking of mapping through things, um, I know in React, sometimes you'll see this key attribute being kind of stuck on things. Could you kind of walk me through what that key attribute means? The key is very important in React because it's its way of tracking the changes that are happening in your application. That's why things such as an index are generally bad when using a key because the array can change around and then the index might change as well. So then it makes it hard for React to actually track those changes. So it's better if you use something like an ID or something that's generally not going to be the same like a name. Um, and then React goes through this process where on a user change, user event or a state change, uh, it sends a snapshot to the virtual DOM and then the virtual DOM checks for changes in the actual DOM. And if it notices any changes, it uh, updates the, the real DOM and then sends those changes back to you. Nice. Let's say you were, you know, speaking of results, you got some results back and you wanted to have a subset of those results. So let's just say you've got a list of 10 users and you really just want users that where their name starts with C. What are some ways you might do that in React? So once I have the results array, I think my first go-to would just be to filter and check to see if the first letter... I, I think I would actually... You just want the first letter? Yeah, just just, just where the first letter matches, yeah. Or in this... Okay, or, yeah, would... As an example, you know, maybe they're typing in an input field and they've just typed in one letter. Okay, yeah, I'd probably filter by the names. So you... So like you go through each individual person and then I would filter the first letter of each name for whatever search query that person put. So if they put in C in the input, I would filter by that that parameter. When you say filter, uh, is this like uh, a function you're gonna write or like, what, what do you mean by filter? Uh, this is the, the filter array method. Gotcha, nice, awesome. Um, <laughs> Let's talk a little bit about components. So um, let's say I have some information and I want to be able to get it into a component. What, what what are some ways I might do that? So usually you want to have state in a top level component. Your state is the way your component manage, manages its data. And React is a unidirectional uh, system. So it usually wants to go one way with the data. So that's why we're going to pass props down to another component so that that component can read the information from the top level component. Uh, every component has access to props and another type of property you can have is children, which is just a React node inside of that component. Let's say I've got a bunch of nested components and I want to pass information all the way down to them. Um, what are some pros and cons of doing that? I think the pro would be that you know that data is from one source of truth. So if you're passing it all the way down, you you know that the data is going to be correct for that single component itself. But a con would be just prop drilling. So if you're not tracking, the, the deeper that nest gets, the harder it is to track the, like the source of truth for it. So that's why we would use things like um, a, like a context so that you can pa have a provider and then have all the consuming components take in that, that state or that property. Nice. What if I didn't want to um, pass in do prop drawing? I didn't want to pass props all the way down to a child component. I just wanted to kind of beam it directly there. What are some ways I might do that? Um, so you can have 
state management library like re Redux and create, um, I'm blanking on the term right now. Uh, but you just have a top level state management system and then inside of the component that you need that specific state, you can consume that state through the, the Redux store. But uh, as I was mentioning earlier, you can use something like use context and wrap your entire application with the provider, then have the comp component consume that data. Uh, you say kind of wrap everything with the provider. Um, are, you are you kind of just like a one global provider? It's kind of where you're getting at. Yeah, one global okay. provider. One more question, uh, and thanks so much for kind of bearing with me here. What, what are your thoughts on hooks and, and what are some use cases for doing your own custom hook? So reusability is super important with hooks. I use one pretty commonly where it's the use fetch hook. And with that hook, I am able to pass a URL or my request into that hook itself and then reuse the functions inside of it and then have access to that state where, is, where I need it. Uh, so that is, that is super important with hooks, just reusability. Um, but yeah, use state and use effect are pretty common in most yeah. of my applications. <laughs> Have you written um, many of your own custom hooks? Yeah, so I know there's a lot online where people have kind of built them, but they're not always to my use case. So I've had to build a few just dynamically for myself and my own projects. Can you kind of give me an example of one that you've written? This one was for um, debouncing. Uh, this this is something I'm not highly educated on. This was more of like following a little bit of tutorials, following documentation, and just because I needed to know how to build that on my own. But yeah, I'm 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 honestly not that educated on the whole entire process of building that specific one. Gotcha. Well, we're at um, at time for the verbal portion. Uh, how do you how do you feel so far? Uh, not too bad. Yeah, I just need to work on articulating yeah. answers because yeah. I understand them, but it's hard to explain. Yeah, them. I mean, it's one of those where it's like I can do it, but like, what's the what, what's the term used to describe that? 